today we're going to veer a little bit into neuroradiology. So if you just are on this channel for the head and neck content, I apologize. Today I'm going to talk about gyriform restricted diffusion and its differential diagnosis. Although these are rare diseases, it's a really important differential to understand. So here's the differential. I think prion disease, particularly creutzfeldt jakob disease, uh, seizures, particularly in a post-ictal state, anoxic injury, abnormalities of glucose, and abnormalities of ammonia levels. I realize this is not a complete list, but I think this highlights the most common causes of what is already an unusual imaging appearance. So we'll start with creutzfeldt jakob disease. Uh, here we see abnormal gyriform restricted diffusion uh, here and also uh, in the occipital region, probably here as well. This patchy areas of gyriform abnormality, rarely is it symmetric. Um, that's what should suggest this disease. The basal ganglia may alternatively or additionally be involved, and you can see uh, the anterior basal ganglia involved, or you can see the thalamus involved sort of vaguely here in this example, but more clearly in this other patient who has uh, certainly peripheral gyriform enhancement as well as basal ganglia enhancement. This hockey stick in the thalamus is affiliated with the variant form of CJD. Patients who are recovering from a seizure may have abnormal gyriform restricted diffusion, as in this patient. This occurs in a single region near the site of origin of the seizure itself, and so the unifocality uh, is often a good clue, as well as uh, simply the, the, the clinical history of a recent seizure. When I say anoxia, I'm not talking about a territorial or regional stroke. I'm talking about a global anoxic event, a, 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 a cardiac event, a loss of blood pressure in the OR, that sort of thing, a global event where the entire brain is hypoperfused. And there's a couple of different patterns you can see. One is just global abnormality of the gray matter, the, the deep gray matter, the basal ganglia and thalamus, the peripheral gray matter, diffusely the whole, uh, the whole thing. And that can, that can sometimes be a little confusing because when it's symmetric and diffuse, it can be harder to, to see that there is an abnormality. But notice that in a normal brain, there's really only a slight difference between normal gray matter and normal white matter, whereas here you can see the gyriform pattern of restricted diffusion as well as back in the occipital lobe and uh, up top in the in the near the vertex uh, as well this patchy form of the disease is an alternative to the diffuse form that you may instead see hypoglycemia is another element of the differential here you can see again a patchy areas of gyriform restricted diffusion uh, and then the, the clinical history is of course key to, uh, to, to this diagnosis. Here's another example of hypoglycemia showing some of the related areas of potential abnormality, including lateral thalamic nuclei and uh, the spleneum of the corpus callosum having abnormal signal. Um, this is reversible. Um, cytotoxic uh, uh, lesion of the corpus callosum, and uh, again, the gyriform signal that we've been talking about the whole time. This is hyperaminemia in a patient with liver failure. Notice that in hyperaminemia, it is a more symmetric distribution, not a perfectly symmetric distribution, but a more symmetric distribution with involvement of the insula and the temporal lobes in this particular case. If you see a symmetric distribution or mostly symmetric distribution, as opposed to a patchy distribution that we were seeing in most of the other diseases, perhaps you can suggest hyperaminemia. So here again is the list of examples that I've shown. And the best way to tell these apart is to get a sufficient clinical history because usually the clinical history will have the answer. 